Hey guys, this is ProGaming2008 and welcome to a very special video. And why is it special? It's because, as you can see on my left hand, I finally got my laptop. This is the HP Victor 16 R024NF. It is extremely powerful. If we compare it to my main PC, it's night and day. Here are the specs on the screen. The CPU is a 13th gen Intel Core i5 13500H. It has 4 performance cores with hyper threading and 8 efficiency cores with a total of 16 threads. We have 16GB of DDR5 5200MHz RAM and we also have two GPUs. We have the Intel Iris Xe integrated graphics which is built into the CPU and then we have the highlight of the laptop, which is an RTX 4060 laptop GPU with 8GB of GDDR6. This laptop is really a beast compared to my main PC with an i5-9400F and an RX 5500XT with 8GB of GDDR4. This thing is going to be my daily driver. Well, the only downside is that it only has 512GB of storage and there's only M.2 slots, so we cannot install a hard drive. But we already have a very fast M.2 NVMe connected through PCI Express Gen 4, which, yeah, it's blistering fast. It's even faster than my main PC for reading, writing, all of that. So now, enough talk. Let's get into the unboxing of the laptop, shall we? So what I received is, of course, the laptop itself and also a mouse. So yeah, if you saw the picture earlier, with the price and the specs and all of that, it came with the X220 mouse from HP themselves. So yeah, that's really awesome. A gaming laptop with a gaming mouse bundled. That's a really nice combo. Let's unbox the laptop first and then we'll get into the mouse a little bit later. God damn it, man. There's a thing that surprised me a little bit, is that HP included a piece of paper saying that this product does not support Windows 7 or Windows 8. I expected that it doesn't support these operating systems, but I didn't expect this piece of paper and I was like... As expected, dude, this won't support Windows 8 or Windows 7 for such a modern device. So this laptop is rich of ports. We have USB-C, two USB 3.0, we also have HDMI, we have the charging port, we also have another USB port, we have Ethernet which is nice, we have an exhaust fan which pushes hot air out, and we also have a headphone jack to connect headphones. Really awesome, you can also use a microphone with it, so this laptop gives you a lot of ports which is awesome don't even expect an optical drive of course before we open up the laptop and see how it looks like let me show you the power supply it's a beefy 230 watt unit absolutely massive but it will still be the pc that consumes the least power out of all my other pcs it consumes much less power than all my other desktops, as expected since it's a mobile computer. But yeah, it's a really a beefy power supply. And what's awesome is that you can use a standard PC power supply connector to connect this charging brick. 
which is really awesome. Also, I forgot to tell you that we're gonna take a look at the mouse right before we open up the laptop screen. So yeah, let's open up the package and then take a look at the awesome X220 gaming mouse from HP. And now it's finally time to open up the laptop for the first time and... Really amazing looking dude. Alright guys, the laptop is ready. I've set everything up and yes, there's the Yorkfield Core 2 Quad PC right there waiting. That's not the point of this video. We're focusing on this HP laptop. So as you can see, I have plug it in because before powering it on for the first time i want to make sure the battery is full because i want it to last as long as possible so yeah here's the laptop with all the stickers all the lovely stickers with the full keyboard this is a french keyboard by the way the power buttons right here the uh this is the omen center um key we'll have a look at that later on and this is the calculator key so that's really really awesome this screen is rocking 144 hertz refresh rate so that's absolutely stunning there are other higher refresh rates but 144 is amazing i'm stuck on a 60 hertz or 75 hertz monitor on my main pc so yeah going from 75 to 144 hertz it's going to be night and day so yeah again i'll let this laptop fully charge and then i'll be back with you guys when it's fully charged and then we'll power it on for the first time and we'll install tiny 11 not windows 11 and i'll tell you why yeah everything is dark as you can see but all right we are now ready let's power it on for the first time and To the BIOS and there we go I pressed F10 to enter the BIOS and there we go and the time is not right the date is right as I'm filming this video HP Victus a Victus by HP gaming laptop 16 uh, 13 gen Intel Core i5 13500H we also have 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM sorry for the focus yeah, the BIOS is from inside, revision F.01. It does not come pre-installed with an operating system, so I installed Ghost Spectre's Tiny 11 Pro, which is basically Windows 11 Pro, but it's way, way shrunk down with all the garbage and the crap removed. And it uses far less RAM, far less disk space. I will review this operating system in a virtual machine later on the channel. The battery life is actually pretty good and um, didn't expect to it to be that long for a gaming laptop to be honest. It lasts around an hour and a half to two hours depending on the workload when gaming or editing. And I do have some gaming benchmarks for you. I didn't benchmark too many games because of the limited time and storage. I only have one source piece of storage. So I couldn't benchmark a lot of games, but still I have some demanding games. And I recorded using OBS to really show you the impact and performance when recording and to really show the true colors of this laptop. So 
let's get going into the benchmarks and also greetings from Hu Tao on my background. First up we have Minecraft Bedrock Edition on a ray tracing eligible map. I think this map is called Neon or something. I know that it's made by Nvidia themselves and ray tracing option is enabled in the uh, video settings. Minecraft Bedrock Edition uses DirectX 12 as opposed to Java Edition using OpenGL. But yeah, it runs pretty well, around 60 FPS. We did get some dips below, but it still remains very playable. So it's a little bit more demanding than playing with no ray tracing at all. So you have to maybe dial down the chunks to six chunks. I set it to eight for ray tracing chunks and 72 for non ray tracing chunks. So yeah, Minecraft Bedrock Edition with ray tracing runs pretty well. Let's move on to the next games. Next up, we have Metro Last Light Complete Edition. I got it for free when it was free on Steam. So yeah, I grabbed it because I always wanted to play this game. And yeah, we are running the integrated benchmark right now. This game uses DirectX 11. We are running at 1080p with the highest details, everything maxed out, but I disabled VSync to get the maximum FPS out of this beast. And we can see that it runs at around 60 to 70 FPS. There are some small dips below 60, but it's pretty infrequent. So yeah, it's pretty good. It was a bit weird, however, that it runs a bit slower than I expected, but still it remains very playable. Here we have another Metro game. This is Metro 2033 Redux. We already have benchmarked this a while ago on the Call 2 port. This again is the integrated benchmark. If there's an option in the games to run the integrated benchmark, I do so because it makes it easy to test performance. We are running once again at 1080p with everything maxed out and VSync disabled. And this game runs about the same but there were a few dips in the 40s, especially when there was some explosions going on. The FPS would drop around 40. So yeah, that was a bit weird. But most of the time, this game uh, remains above 60 FPS. You can use a wrapper to translate DirectX into Vulkan. But I tried that off camera and OBS does not like recording with Vulkan. So that's why I benchmarked all the games without Vulkan except for some games. So yeah, Metro 2033 Redux runs pretty well on this machine. Here's a retro game that received a ray tracing patch by the community. This is Quake 2. But as you can see, this time it uses Vulkan instead of OpenGL by default because it has some nice loading effects. So basically, ray tracing is activated. In the game, there's an option to switch between ray tracing and the original render option. So this game does not really have graphical options, but yeah, otherwise, hardware based ray tracing is enabled in the settings and it's running at 1080p and this game is almost perfectly locked at 60 fps without any dips below so you can play quake 2 with ray tracing or the original render option both would run really well on this laptop here we have gta 5 this game is a little bit of a pain to test because, you know, there's so many graphical options in the graphics settings and also there's an advanced graphics options and there's no presets. So I can't just say I tested it with medium or high details because, you know, what does that mean? So I'll put a footage on the screen showing you all the graphics and advanced graphics options. So most of the details are set to very high, some to ultra. I set the shadows to NVIDIA PCSS, set 16x in astrotropic filtering, set the refresh rate to 144 Hz, disabled VSync, and as you can see, the game runs above 60 FPS, so around 100 FPS. And as you can see, Hutao is causing a lot of mayhem in the city with the cops 
And again, I'm doing really heavy police chases in GTA games to really push the hardware to its limits, to really show the true colors of this computer. So of course, GTA 5 runs very, very well on this machine. This game, you can easily play it on a Core 2 Quad, like we saw it in the Core 2 Quad benchmark video, and it will still run really great. So yes, GTA 5 will run very well on this laptop. Here we have Imposter Hide, a Unity game. And this game is really easy to run. It will run even on a potato or something weak. So it will run on just about anything. You just need at least Windows 7 to play this game and a DirectX 11 compatible GPU. And yeah, even though the FPS is set to 60 FPS in the game settings, as you can see, VSync is engaged by default. It looks at 144 FPS because the screen has 144 Hertz refresh rate. You can also use uh, DXVK, a wrapper that translates DirectX to a Vulkan, and it will use the GPU a lot more than DirectX 11. You will still get the same performance though. There's no real point of using Vulkan with this game because it will run on just anything. So yes, of course this laptop will run impulse to hide. I would be surprised if this didn't run well. I would be very concerned. Here we have probably the most demanding benchmark I have for this video. This is Fortnite. Again, there are a lot of graphical options just like GTA 5, but this game has presets. But I still wanted to set custom details and I'll just put them on the screen. So basically everything is maxed out. I set the anti-aliasing to NVIDIA DLSS, Deep Learning Super Sampling, because the RTX 4060 supports DLSS 3.0. And I also enabled hardware accelerated ray tracing, set the graphics to epic details at 1080p. The performance is not that bad. It's pretty good. It's smooth around 60 FPS. We can see some stutters, but this is due to me having an uncapped frame rate because I wanted to once again show the true colors of this laptop. If you want to get rid of the frame times, you might have to enable VSync or set a frame limiter to lock the game at 60 FPS or 120 FPS because yeah, that will help to reduce the frame times. Fortnite will run very well on this laptop, of course, as expected, even with ray tracing enabled. And of course, guys, we have the most interesting game of the planet. Does it run Genshin Impact? And of course, yes, it does. We are running at 1080p, everything maxed out once again, VSync disabled. I set the game FPS to 60. There's 30 FPS, 45 FPS, and 60 FPS. So I set that to 60, disabled VSync. This game is almost perfectly locked at 60 FPS and does not have frame time issues like with Fortnite. Also, Genshin Impact is fairly easy to run. You can even run this on our Core 2 Quad like we did in a short while ago where I ran Genshin Impact at 1080p with medium details on a Core 2 Quad. And it was only with 4 gigs of RAM. Here with 16 gigabytes of DDR5, of course this will run very, very smoothly. Even on my main PC with the i5-9400F, it will run extremely well. There's no stutters or pauses or skips because I'm running all the games off of AM.2. Unlike on my main PC, which I was running almost all of them with a mechanical hard drive, which had some frame time spikes going on. So yes, this laptop runs the most interesting game of the planet. It runs Genshin very well. And right before we end the benchmarks, I wanted to let you know that I'm not using fraps anymore for modern PCs to display the FPS because I also want to display the CPU usage, the RAM usage, and the GPU usage, as well as which render path the games are using. So instead, now I'm using MSI Afterburner instead of fraps because if you remember on all my other videos, I was always using fraps just to get the FPS. But MSI Afterburner is now going to be the program we're going to use, just like most reviewers and benchmarkers do in modern PCs. 
we're only going to use fraps for all the PCs like with Windows XP for example. So guys, thank you so much for watching this amazing laptop unboxing and test video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, smash that like button, share this video with your friends and also with other tech savvy people. Also subscribe to my two channels, even if you don't understand my main language French, it will be very appreciated. And also check out Swag, which is my best friend's channel. I edit some videos for him, which is extremely good. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in another one. Stay safe. Take care of you. Peace. Bye. And Hutal says bye too, by the way. See ya.